Okay, I'm going to show you how to make the fastest, easiest dish of all time, at least in my repertoire. Uh, active cook time is basically just one minute, and all you need is a pack of boneless, skinless chicken thighs, a two cup jar of salsa, any salsa you like, and a slow cooker, or an Instapot. That's it. <laughs> So I'm going to tell you about the absolute easiest version of this recipe first, and then I'm going to do a slightly uh, more advanced version of the recipe on camera because it is slightly better to do it that way. So the absolute easiest version of this recipe, uh, you don't even put these chicken breasts on a cutting board like I did. I just did that so it would look nice for the video and for one other reason, which will become clear in a moment. Uh, you just literally dump them directly from the packet into the slow cooker, and then you follow it with the salsa. I'm gonna go ahead and dump the salsa into the slow cooker right now. There, so you would do that, and you would also just dump all of those chicken thigh, uh, thighs. Thighs would be better, by the way, if you have chicken thighs, use those, but you just dump all the chicken breasts in there, mix it all around, put the lid on, and cook it for a few hours until it's done, and that's the dish. Uh, but like I said, I'm gonna do a slightly more complicated version. Uh, if you leave these chicken breasts whole, uh, the fibers will be a bit stringy. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut them into chunks. I'm going to do just like the breast is like this. I'm going to do one slice down the middle, and then I'm just going to do a few slices across. So I get, I get chunks that are about, you know, they're like very big bite-sized pieces. They're like, I don't know, three bite-sized pieces. This is going to take me an extra like minute or two and I'm going to have to wash this cutting board and knife afterwards with soap and water very thoroughly. So, you know, it changes the active cook time from one minute to five minutes. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> uh, but I do think it does make a better end product. The chicken gets a little more submerged in the salsa and um, like I said, the fibers are not going to be as long and as stringy. See like this little, little end part of the breast that's like smaller and thinner and floppier? I can just cut that off into one piece by itself. Yeah, like I said, chicken thighs are so much better than chicken breasts, PSA. They are juicier, t more tender, they're cheaper. They're much harder to mess up. You can overcook them and they will still be delicious. Chicken breasts, you have to be more careful. Uh, with this preparation, it's okay though. You just cook them in the slop. Uh, credit where credit is due, I originally heard about this recipe from the YouTube channel How to ADHD. Not like they need my help <laughs> for any promotion, they're a huge channel. Uh, but yeah, if you found this video because you have ADHD or you know you just have a hard time cooking for yourself because it's too hard and takes too long, uh, and if for some reason you haven't heard of that channel yet, go check it out. All right, with my clean hand, I will take the camera over to the slow cooker and show you. So I've dumped it all into the salsa, and then all you have to do for the next part is stir it around. I am going to wash this dirty hand so I can use both hands. Be right back. What is it, my son? Do you want your breakfast? You already had your breakfast. You can't fool me. Yeah, you already had your breakfast. Okay, so you can totally just use your hands to mix this, but I already turned on the slow cooker and I want to keep my hands clean so I can operate a camera. So I'm going to mix it with a spoon. But yeah, if you do the absolute easiest version of this recipe, uh, you don't have to wash any dishes either aside from your slow cooker. But yeah, you just make sure that the chicken breast is submerged in the salsa. Again, if you're doing this with just whole chicken breasts or with whole boneless, skinless chicken thighs, uh, it, this will still totally work. It's just a little harder to get them submerged, but you basically just want them to be submerged. They don't have to be completely submerged. See how they're peeking out a little bit. And I've already turned my slow cooker on to high. Now all I do is I put the lid on and I wait for a few hours until it's done. And that's it. Uh, if you have an Instapot, this will happen much faster. If you don't have a slow cooker or an Instapot, you can do this in a heavy duty pot in a 300 to 350 degree oven for a few hours. It's the same method. It'll still work. And we'll come back when it's done. Okay, and after it has been cooking on high for four hours or on low for six to eight hours, what you want to see is the chicken just coming apart very easily and shredding. See how it's just coming apart and shredding? Because that is the next step. 
This is like the other minute or two of effort that has to go into this dish, <laughs> shredding the chicken. Now, this is hard to do with one hand while holding a camera, but because we cooked this chicken for a very long time, it kind of just shreds apart on its own. It would be much faster and easier and more efficient if I used two forks. But as I said, I'm holding a camera with one hand, so I'm doing it with one hand. And see, you can still do it with one hand. Can you do this with other meats? Yes, you can. Uh, the cook time might need to be adjusted a little bit, like if you do beef or uh, pork, you might have to cook it a little bit longer. Uh, but yeah, it's about two pounds of, of chicken breast or chicken thigh. But yeah, you could do two pounds of pork, two pounds of lamb, two pounds of beef, and cook it the exact same way. And see, as I'm shredding it and breaking it up, it's thickening up as well. It's drinking in any of the extra remaining juices. And then once you've broken up the chicken, you need to taste it for seasoning. If you use a store-bought salsa, which confession, I did not. I actually uh, used a homemade salsa. And here is my kitten. <laughs> Donica, do you want to taste it? <laughs> she, I mean, she learned how to jump up on the kitchen counters as soon as she could when she was like probably three months old. Now she's five months old and she loves uh, jumping up on the kitchen counters and getting into mischief. Her sister does too, but she does more. Okay, anyway, back to the chicken. Uh, as I was saying, if you use a store-bought salsa, it might be salty enough. I used a homemade salsa, so it might need more salt. Uh, I always wait till the end to check for seasoning with something like this though, because you don't want it to be too salty. Mmm. Yeah, that's just right. That's the other great thing about this kind of recipe. Like it literally is just two ingredients, <laughs> a jar of salsa and some chicken. Okay, I am going to come back and show you how I am going to eat this. You know what? I lied <laughs> as I was finishing eating that little bit of chicken. I think it could have used with a little more salt. So I'm gonna add some salt. Uh, if you're gonna eat this with a lot of say um, cheese or something that has a lot of salt, uh, be cautious. Also, one of the ways that you can enjoy this is just dump a bunch of melty cheese in here and then scoop it up with tortilla chips, which are salty. So if you do that, then perhaps uh, err on the side of less salt. Okay. And now Evane is really considering jumping up to join her sister. Evane, baby. Hi, sweetheart. Yes. Okay, honestly, I think these tacos are a little better in crispy uh, shells or as a burrito, but I have a bunch of masa to get rid of, so I made homemade corn tortillas, totally in the spirit of this very easy, anybody can cook it dish. Ooh, we're steaming up the camera lens. All right, so I'm gonna get me a little dollop of chicken, some avocado, some olives, and I'm gonna try to still make this look appealing <laughs> for a thumbnail. It's like when you make a taco properly, the lettuce or, and toppings just kind of cover everything up. All right, so I've got olives and avocado and cilantro so far. I'm going to add, I think honestly melty cheese would be better, but I'm gonna add a little cotija because actually, no, this is queso fresco. I got a kilo of it for a party we had three weeks ago, and this is what we have left of it. it I've been like, trying to use it on so many things just to get rid of it. I'm, I'm seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Okay. What is it? You want some pan? Uh-huh. And this might feel like overkill, but I also have a little bit of homemade salsa verde to get rid of. So I'm going to go ahead and put some homemade salsa verde on my chicken and red salsa tacos. And I probably will add some shredded lettuce to this off camera. Uh, why not? I'll make it look ugly now. <laughs> Shreddis! There, now you can't tell what it is. <laughs> it's just a pile of mess. <laughs> I'm going to eat it now. Mm. Anyway, it's incredibly simple. You can customize these any way you want. You can make a burrito. You can, like I mentioned earlier, you could just dump some cheese in there and then like dip that out with chips. You could just serve it on a plate. Just some shredded chicken, some beans and some rice, and maybe a salad. And it's great leftover. You can keep it up in your fridge for up to five days and just reheat as much of it as needed. It freezes well. So this is just an amazing dish that 
ticks so many boxes. It's incredibly convenient. It's pretty, pretty dang tasty as well. And I hope you make it. Okay, my husband had a brilliant idea. He wanted buttered noodles topped with some reheated shredded chicken and then top that with Parmesan cheese. <laughs> Ta-da! Not what I would have thought of, but this is totally valid. And here you see another variation of rice and chicken with a salad. Mm -hmm. 